Vladimir is going to share his experience implementing cross-platform GUID support in Microsoft Office because he's a developer in the Microsoft Office core experience team. Okay, just uh, for me to get idea that uh, how many people still use COM in their code? Okay, so I guess you're using GUIDs. So in our office uh, code base, we technically use, uh, still continue to use COM and uh, then we talk about uh, so why we're using COM in the first place and we want to use uh, kind of implement this unknown query interface in many places and mostly because in our co office code base we don't use RTTI. So using I know unknown query interface is kind of very well established way to uh, to do dynam dynamic cast. And um, and as you know, like Visual Studio supports COM for many, many years. We have all these different facilities like how to declare GUID uh, in, uh, for COM, how to access it using the special operator UID of, uh, but for some reason, GUID is not supported in standard C++. So when our team uh, moved to um, kind of decide we want to share the same code base across multiple platforms, we want to have the same office code, like majority of our shared office code work on Android platform, work on uh, iOS platform. The question was like, how we do GUIDs? And, uh, I pretty much, I was not the first person who come up with this idea, but uh, thankfully, this is what I saw in our code, and I, I actually expanded markers. So thankfully, yes, definitely like all this code, you will see typically, uh, it's hidden behind markers. But main idea is like, you have an interface using like Visual Studio Construct, like Decal spec, uh, to define your good, and somewhere be below, uh, you need to, people typically have some kind of template, and have template specialization, and specify, for this given type, I would like to have a certain good. But we know like a template specialization um, must happen in the same namespace where templates is defined. So if you kind of type happen to be in special namespace, what these people may do, like they just simply saying, I would like to close namespace first, uh, do it in kind of global namespace, open namespace again. The other solution will be like uh, these goods will just simply go like different file altogether, but in the end you have effectively code duplication, right? You have the same stuff written in multiple places. In one case you have your GUID written as a, as a string, and in another case you have just a bunch of, um, I can't read these uh, numbers, it really kind of bytes. I, they're not human readable. I really want my GUID to be uh, kind of uh, string based or something like this. So this is what I felt about this code. Like, <laughs> it's really kind of big and hairy. Uh, so the question is, look, can we do better? Like, I saw this code now, and I, it was weekend. I was like, really? Can we do something different? And uh, I'm coming from kind of many years of uh, C sharp development, and this is pretty much what I want to do. And if effectively this code compiles in Visual Studio C++, uh, because uh, Visual Studio C++ has support for uh, middle interfaces, but apparently the same middle sy syntax you can use uh, for your types. Uh, it's kind of a great idea, but don't use it. Because what happened, what I, we found, that uh, it's a big difference between if you're using this uh, attribute versus decal spec, uh, this attribute increases your uh, instance size by extra pointer. I look at this pointer and it's just zeros. I don't know, I filed a bug, Visual Studio still didn't fix it, but <laughs> just don't use it. Anyway, it's not standard. It will be great if standard like, adopts it at some point, but it just doesn't work this way. So what we can do, how we can still be kind of something like this, but uh, something we can implement today. So macro to the rescue. <laughs> I know some people don't like macros, but I believe macros is a tool. As any tool, you can, have, you can overuse it. Like you can have a hammer, you can smash your finger, or you can kind of put a nail to, to the deck, right? So it's a tool. And I think this is a great tool in, in this context, and I believe this is how macros should look like. I changed names a little bit. In reality, it will be like MSO, Strack, GUID, whatever. But um, just for the sake of this presentation, I believe this is what it might look like. So what's important to notice here, like um, if you see uh, uh, one of uh, kind of approach I see sometimes people do, they just have this macro and have, uh, inside of this macro they have type and they have uh, good, and, uh, and technically they hide this uh, struct or class inside of this macro. 
what we found is not a good idea because uh, you have a bunch of different tools, say like a Visual Studio or Sublime Editor, or inside of Microsoft we have special kind of research tool to index all your source code. And if you put your class name inside of Marker, you can't find your class. You can't simply say, I'm looking for struct blah or struct, struct foo. So it was just simply not able to find. So we would like to have uh, explicit keyword struct or class to be kind of separated, like to be kind of, so it can be easily found without any hacks to your tools, which you use for indexing your code. And, um, but unfortunately, uh, we, in this case, marker to define GUID, we need to be kind of specific either struct or class because in Visual C++, uh, struct or class is actually part of um, ABI. So thankfully, even according to standard, uh, struct and class are interchangeable. But uh, in Visual Studio, if you do that, uh, and say in one case you, you're doing formal declaration class, and after that you're really saying struct, you'll have warning, uh, level one warning, because it just doesn't work. It works probably, probably fine in Clang and any other kind of standard compliant uh, compilers. No? No. No. Okay. You can do one. You can go from struct to class, but no class or whatever you want. So in reality, we need to have two markers: uh, struct good and class good. Uh, so this is, I believe, much better. <laughs> so how we implement this uh, macro? Uh, Visual C plus plus is trivial. Uh, we just simply kind of saying this macro is just the same decal spec. Decal spec, uh, what we found is has very nice property. Even you have like forward declaration of a class, declaration of your class, or kind of re-declaration of class, you can put this decal spec anywhere and Visual Studio C++ will still pick it up and do the right thing. So it's totally trivial implementation, not interesting. Clank. <laughs> so yes, we, I think we chose just use Clank for all other kind of platforms except Windows. So there are two different techniques we apply here. First of all, uh, in C++11, we can simply take a string and have a const expression um, function con to convert string to good. Uh, another thing what we do, we pretty much just simply saying this struct itself, it will be nothing more just a, a function uh, definition, like special const expression function, which uh, will take uh, our good and return it for a given type. And uh, if you see, so technically, I think what this marker does, we have a forward declaration for our struct. We're saying it's external C++. Why? Because, um, say, look at um, some middle generated header files, and you often find that you have the interface declaration, people put around this external C, so they're technically saying this is a C uh, type. So if you put this marker inside of a C context, uh, and we can rely on uh, uh, function overloading, and C does not support function overloading. So you need to explicitly say this function, which we declare here, it will be uh, kind of according to C++ uh, coding, uh, coding conventions. Um, so we just use this function uh, to initialize a good uh, field. So in our code, we're just using static field because we need to kind of rely on some, uh, uh, some default implementation which we already have. But um, I believe this syntax should work. We just have a constant expression for value and initialize it. Uh, UID of becomes just a marker, which returns a field uh, from the GUID. And uh, we also need to think about case. Then say you have a class A, and uh, which has a GUID on it. And now we have class B derived from A. So if you ask for GUID for B, uh, it actually may return you kind of GUID from the base class. So to avoid this uh, uh, kind of returning good for the wrong class, we need to have default case, and we just can create special uh, template function, which would simply kind of throw error. Uh, I didn't specify it here, but uh, typically what we do, like we have some kind of fake uh, template for this type, and just check in size, if size is zero, then it's kind of error. Because if you say in like static assert false, it would fail all the time. We need to have some kind of condition depending on type. So any questions? You're not supposed to read it, uh, <laughs> but uh, this kind of put how this conversion from string to uh, GUID looks like. I tried different versions. Uh, I probably still don't understand how const expression work because what I found like under debugger, even I say const, const expression, I still then I run my code somehow like uh, all this initialization right there in my code. 
And if I have a cool smart logic with uh, if statements, uh, checking different ca character ranges, uh, throw an exception if it's something wrong and so on, it can produce me a lot of code. I kind of was a little bit concerned, at least in debug mode. So thankfully, I tried to implement simplest algorithm, which everything it does just takes a character, maps, maps it to a um, hexadecimal uh, uh, number, and just forms a good out of them. So just to repeat, uh, we have uh, string to good uh, as a just uh, const expression to convert. We have uh, get good uh, method. And we also found some few issues. I don't know how it can be important in your case, but just I just decided to put on the slides. It works only for C++ 11 because we rely on const expressions. If your code is still somewhere using C++ 98 or C, this code will not work. And um, we also found some very interesting uh, situations and people use sometimes this uh, UID off inside of uh, uh, as a template parameter. It didn't really work, but uh, we can actually do very simple workaround, uh, just factory defines a special like, resolve good uh, PTR struct and have like specialization if, for example, this PTR is null or not null, so we can actually do, return just different things. But again, it was, NDK specific uh, linker error. If the same code works just fine on iOS or like uh, Mac, it's just something like, seems like NDK has some kind of eager optimization, just somehow optimizes all this code. So what I think like, uh, we have pretty good solution for this cross platform story for goods, but I think the similar technique can be applied for any type of other custom templates which you may have in your code. So imagine that uh, uh, today is pretty easy. You can have just kind of some types associated with uh, your types, and you can do all these different uh, interesting uh, template magic. But what if you want to associate some some values uh, or calculate something along the lines? So a similar technique can be applied here. You just define some kind of macro. Macro will be expanded to function, and you have just some kind of uh, special uh, type type traits to access this value. You just initialize this value from this function. Have some default case, and you're done. Okay. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.